Hi, my name is Fabio, and uh, I'm part of Trust5, and I will speak about invariant and selective representation in visual cortex. I work mainly with Tommaso and Lorenz. So uh, I start with an observation that one can argue that one of the most important aspects of intelligence is the ability to learn. However, if we look at, uh, let's call it like that, the state of art algorithms, for example, in uh, object recognition, so humans and animals on one side and deep convolution neural networks on the other one. One of the main striking evidence is that, and we were discussing about this yesterday, is that the way of learning is pretty much different. One needs a lot of examples, the other one is not. The focus of my work in the last, let's say, two or three years, it has been the problem of finding a good image representation, and by good I mean a representation that uh, allows to build up networks like the visual cortex that needs a very l uh, low number of training samples. The main intuition here is that uh, a task have symmetries. You think about the star, no matter if the star is in a certain position, uh, rotated in a certain way, you still recognize it. Those are unimportant details. So we have been able to prove that factoring out those symmetries, which of course are task dependent, allows uh, uh, the sample complexity of the learning to be drastically <coughs> reduced. In this case, for uh, I'm just showing the visual uh, object recognition task. So what does this have to do with the uh, brain and in, in particular the visual cortex? One may uh, start with a hypothesis which seems pretty plausible <laughs> that one of the purposes why visual cortex was built by evolution as it is, is that uh, it is able to um, build up an invariant representation with respect to the transformation of natural images. If you believe that, we were able to prove that such a representation can be implemented by uh, operational capabilities of neurons, like high dimensional dot products, uh, threshold nonlinearities, and sums. More in particular, you can think about bunches of uh, uh, simple cells and uh, complex cells, which we call the Hubel Vision module that we were able to prove that uh, can implement local invariance for some type of transformation, which I don't uh, specify in here. And that if you, now it's not evident from here, but if you build up uh, uh, and, and, and cluster those uh, kind of modules, you have a hierarchical architecture. And we were able to prove that uh, at the top of the architecture, you have an invariant selective and robust signature. If you believe to this uh, uh, invariance hypothesis, you have optimizing, that optimizing invariance, many interesting consequences. Now, you cannot see from the, okay. Um, you can predict uh, the retina structure. You can predict the presence of GABA receptive fields in V1. You can predict the presence of mirosymmetric receptive fields in macaque uh, uh, cortex phase area. Many challenges remain open. I just briefly mentioned two or three. So we are, it would be great to have a much more a clear idea which are the receptive fields, also from an analytic point of view in V2, V4, IT, feedback, and other sensory modalities. <laughs>